As a portfolio manager of the Platinum International Healthcare Fund, can you tell us a little bit about Platinum, your background and the investment team? So I joined Platinum in 2003 and um, the company itself was founded in um, 1994. So my background, I come from industry, so essentially I've got a um, PhD in um, virology, working with viruses, and I, prior to that I worked for Novartis doing my masters also on, on HIV, and um, after my PhD I went to Johnson & Johnson and worked there as a, as a scientist on finding new targets for oncology. So my background is, is science, and um, I learned most of the financial part of my job here on the job at Platinum. From a practical perspective, how do you find the opportunities in an international healthcare fund? So one of the things is when I worked in, in industry at, at pharmaceutical companies, so one thing was I worked overseas. I worked in, in Switzerland and I'm, I'm German as well, so I kind of have quite a network that I tap into trying to find new ideas journals, um, talking to also brokers in the financial industry. But my main um, ideas for the fund or themes come out of industry. So looking at different conferences, different um, publications, talking to people overseas at companies and, and trying to see where, where are they going. That's mainly where I get my ideas from, my themes for the fund. What are the investment objectives of the Platinum International Healthcare Fund? and what sort of product and services does that cover within the industry? So the fund looks at companies that are obviously in the healthcare um, sector. That can be biotechs, late stage, early stage biotechs, so drugs that are just going into human testing or drugs that are being approved. There could be pharma companies which vast infrastructure globally to sell their drugs. It could be devices, it could be insurance companies, services, there's a big service network that pharma companies use. There could be um, uh, diagnostic companies, so it's a broad range of companies that are all obviously have different metrics to look at, but it's, it's quite broad. Your strategy focuses on absolute returns. Can you describe your typical net investor position and how and why that can change? So usually what determines that is obviously valuation. So one thing that we had over the last five, six years was a big bubble, except that now has turned to a bubble for biotechs. So we then chose to not be invested as much and took off profits where we felt the valuation was too high. So that was roughly with around 70% invested. Once we probably now slowly we had a sell off, so we're now going to see a little bit more. So we then will move up to 90% invested. But as generally, it moves around what valuations tell us and what we feel is, is right in that sector. Can you talk through the investment philosophy behind your strategy? So the, essentially the way, the way I look at the world is, is according to themes. So one of the themes that um, we, we invest in is um, diabetes and diabetes globally. And so we invest in different, different companies that have different products. So we have in our, the top 10 position is um, two companies that are, have both the biggest infrastructure in diabetes globally. So that's a theme. We also have themes, obviously, in oncology. There's a lot of work going on in research labs in oncology. We, um, we like um, viral research, vaccines. So essentially what we always look at is a theme that we then invest accordingly and try and understand it. It's on the service side as well. For example, pharma companies need services to recruit patients. So we go into companies that specialize into that or health IT, we look at that. How can IT help pharma companies make better drugs? You manage a concentrated portfolio of around 30 to 100 stocks. How do you select stocks for the portfolio? Going back to my training as a scientist, I look at companies, as I said, according to themes. So for example, let's take diabetes. I go and um, put an example together of several companies that fit into that category and then I look at them one by one and try and understand their science, try and understand their product portfolio as well as their commercial abilities that they have and then secondary I go and, and, and look at valuation and see how that fits in in the current environment or in terms of their history. But overall I tend to look at really 
each company and if you then look at the universe of healthcare it's actually not that big and often these companies have these interlinked alliances or partnerships that basically make them all it's a bit incestuous really but overall that's kind of how I look at it on, on who they are and then secondary I look at, at, at valuation and then decide do I want to buy it or not. Why should an investor focus on healthcare? Are you looking for the next cancer cure or hospital operator? I think one of the things in healthcare is that um, it's obviously about innovation. It's about, um, it is about biotechs. It is not necessarily about the next cancer cure, but it is about advancements in, I guess, medicine overall. What, what do we have in, in terms of how do we diagnose different diseases better? How do we treat rare diseases? And also about the big themes like diabetes, like hepatitis C, and, and all these things that, that obviously cause an issue, and these companies are there trying to solve them. So, so it is about um, innovation, I would say, rather than, yes, there is maybe sometimes a service company in there or, or a hospital, but even in hospitals or services, there is innovation trying to make things better, look after patients better. So it is about that, and I think it is, um, that's, what the fund is about, about new technologies, new innovations. How do you manage risk in the healthcare sector, particularly in an industry associated with research and development costs, regulatory issues and legal issues? I think it goes back to how, as a scientist, you look at things. So you're always much more conservative and you do pay attention to to details and try and understand and, and preempt risk really. But in the end it comes to portfolio construction where you then say well I'm not going to have 5% in a um, early stage biotech so you're much more than looking at pharma companies that are, have a low valuation but you see the growth prospects so these are much more solid investments but in terms of risk there, it is risk there is risk with biotech so you will always have some that won't make it but then you try and balance that and look at the companies whether they have more products coming through and and what's the basis of their uh, or their fundamentals of this company if they have a platform that's really good they can then also easier come up with new products if something fails so it is overall attention to detail and making sure that you don't have a catalyst driven um, biotech because usually they they don't work that well the fund has a 10-year track record given its focus in healthcare are there any unique performance characteristics within the fund I think in healthcare, as I said before, you've got the, the biotechs can be volatile because of, of what they are and, some, and sometimes things fall over. But if you then look at a 10-year at a or 15-year horizon, that will net itself out and it, it's quite a steady performer because of the innovation. And if you keep putting new stocks in with new ideas that then build up or, or come out or, or be successful, then you get that positive performance out of that. Over time, I think the um, volatility nets itself out. What's the recommended time frame for investors? The time frame is if you look at the industry, so to develop a drug these days can take you from anywhere of eight years up to 15 years, depending on what disease you look at, or even if you have a new diagnostic, that will take a couple of years to actually make it from start to finish and then be approved. So I would recommend um, at least five years and um, really ideally more than that because of the lead times or the cycles of that industry.